marriage to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by its cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For it's it's a legal or moral binding pledge, a pledge to pledge that is legally and morally obligated to do. Hallelujah. Pact of engagement, engaging, engagement. It is a very familiar term. Engagement is a very familiar term. We use it in marriage and commitment and involvement and even battle. You know, everywhere uh, this engagement. Today I want to speak on God who engages us. God is a God of engagement. God, they were the normal engaging night with his father. You know, that is the most peaceful time, enjoyable time in his life. But in the morning, what he does is he comes out and he starts starts to engage everybody. His disciples he will be teaching, his enemies he will be engaging. Even in Israel, you end up with I don't like you, I don't want him with me. You know, never Jesus would say, Jesus will always. Anybody asks anything, it doesn't matter who you are, Jesus is always engaging. Praise the Lord. So and I use the word dissociation. So it hurt. She started crying when I said. Uh, there is a tendency for us to dissociate with others or the world and go into these trances and stay there and she started crying. So that's when she told me all these experiences. So today I want to tell you about associating or engaging, engaging, okay? Because God wants to engage with us and God wants us to engage with Him and with each other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus engages with our attitude, our feelings, and everything, you know. Uh, God always welcomes this. And what is engaging? What is engaging? Engaging is sharing of genuine feelings. and genu ge It is very genuine. See, Moses was scared. Moses first was a leader, right? He was first as a leader. He was ready to do this, even ready to kill anybody, and ready to fight against the Pharaoh. Then he ran away 40 years in the wilderness. So all that is gone now. God comes and encounters Moses and God engages Moses and Moses is coming out with all these uh, excuses and God is saying I, I created you man come on you know I, I want you. God is engaging him at, at one time God is really angry with Moses but God doesn't spank him. God doesn't <laughs> discipline him. But God again engages, keeps on engaging with him. Praise God. Moses, the whole thing, all time, Moses is scared to do this. Moses is so scared. I am not good enough for this. And God tells you, no, that is God. Okay? We know how Moses ended his race. Hallelujah. What a great leader Moses was. Hallelujah. The, the word says there was nobody like Moses. When if Moses believed who he was, and if God believed who he was, as Moses thought of himself, Moses believed who he was, and if God believed who he was, as Moses thought of himself, Moses believed who he was, and if God believed who he was, as Moses thought of himself, Moses who he was, and if God believed who he was, as Moses thought of himself, Thrust into leadership. They will be thrust into sacrifices. They will be thrust into the cross. They will be thrust to stand for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, God is engaging each and every one of us. Just like Pastor Kenny was saying. You know, God is engaging us so that we will be ready to face. Hallelujah. Whatever God puts in front of us. <coughs> Hallelujah. To face the cross. So, same thing with Gideon. Gideon was so scared. He was so afraid. He was really a scared guy. Really, see, last week, uh, I think week before last or so, I, I spoke on these uh, things. Praise the Lord. See, here, Jesus is engaging everybody. Zebedee's son's request caused a conflict among the disciples. Jesus not only engages Zebedee's sons, James and John, but Jesus also encourages others to, or, or Zebedee's sons to engage with each other. He is correcting, he is promoting, he is, is encouraging, doing all these things. Hallelujah. Praise the God. God is the God of engagement. So, let me go fast. The antonym or the opposite of engagement is 
disengagement, okay? No engagement. There is no more engagement. That is a very dangerous thing. A very dangerous thing. Uh, in marriage, in marriage. You know what is the most uh, troublesome thing in marriage? Hallelujah. It is not uh, engagement. It is not fight. ഉണ്ട് <laughs> pushes at the husband don't do this then the wife will change her tone and never thought to do it we were you know <laughs> don't touch my husband who are you to ask question my husband see the fights are not a big trouble in marriages disengagement is a big trouble when your wife is shouting at you if the husband doesn't care when the husband is quarreling to the wife the wife says i don't care that is a big problem disengagement is very dangerous um it's same it's the same in relationships too god too sometimes disengages hallelujah matthew chapter 7 verse 23 then i will declare to them I never knew you. Go away from me. See? That is God disengaging. Devam parayana. Naan neengal oru naalu arinilla. Oru naalu arinilla. I I never knew you. I don't know you. See? That is disengaging. So they are saying about the love. Oh, didn't we sit together at the same table? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do that for you? And God is saying I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that is a big problem. So we are speaking of engagement. They even the Lord, engagement is not a Malayalam word. Engaging. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. We want this thing, right? Because engaging here, that means that or 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 a bond that is there. Ah, that means that we challenge here. We 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 contact with each other. That means that we are bond up with each other. ബന്ധം ഇല്ലാതെ കുടുംബങ്ങളിൽ ഭാര്യയെ എന്തെങ്കിലും പറഞ്ഞ ഭർത്താവിന് ഒരു പ്രശ്നവും ഇല്ല ഭാര്യയുടെ വേദന ഭർത്താവിന് ഒരു പക്ഷേ വേദനയില്ല ഭർത്താവിന്റെ വേദന ഭാര്യക്ക് ഒരു ബന്ധവും ഇല്ല എന്ന് വരുമ്പോൾ അവിടെ പ്രശ്നങ്ങളാണ് അത് അത് വലിയ അപകടം ഹാലലൂയ ദൈവവും ഇതുപോലെ തന്നെ സംഭവിക്കാനിടെ മതയുടെ ശിക്ഷ ഏഴാം തീയതി നമ്മളത് വായിച്ചത് ഹാലലൂയ സോ യു നോട്ട് പ്രശ്നത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം ഉള്ളിൽ തട്ടണം നിങ്ങൾ എന്തെങ്കിലും പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്റെ ഉള്ളിലും തട്ടണം മറ്റൊരാളെ നിങ്ങളെ മുറിവേൽപ്പിക്കാനായിട്ട് തുറന്നു കൊടുക്കുക എന്തിനാണ് കേട്ടാവ് others can insult him he opened himself up but if he stood his stand his his on his on his power what would have happened they would have burned hallelujah adha namma kartha nam kanichu so engage engaging and disengaging engagement versus disengagement now there when i say this of disengagement let me say tell something more there are times when we feign or, or uh, disengagement abhinayikina also you know bhaye patnaod varakunda kanju endey kartha എന്തോ ചെയ്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഭാര്യ മൈൻഡ് ചെയ്തില്ല ഭാര്യയിൽ നിന്ന് അവിടെ കാപ്പി ഉണ്ടാക്കി അവിടെ പിടിച്ചിട്ട് അവിടെ പോകുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒന്ന് ഭർത്താവിനെ ഒന്ന് പഠിപ്പിക്കുക അല്ലെ ഭാര്യ ഒന്ന് മനസ്സിലായിരിക്കും ജർമായ <laughs> 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 
But if you will not listen, my salt will keep in secret for your pride. So, here it is really serious. Malayalam is my chair. God is crying in secret. The prophet is crying, crying in secret. Why is he not crying openly? Because when he cries openly, others should feel the hurt. But if they are not feeling the hurt, then there is no point in crying openly. So what do we do? God is crying secretly. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 to 28. Proverbs 1, 24 to 28. Okay, so those verses speak of God disengaging. Uh, even if you pray to me, I will not listen to you. See, uh, can you tell me one instance where God will not listen to them? Hallelujah, God always listens. God always, but God in his anger is saying, because you are not, I, 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 I disciplined you and you don't feel the pain. See, I, I'm, I'm beating you, but you don't feel it. You are not changing. So then God is saying, I am not going to listen to you. But when we read the Bible, throughout the Bible, whenever people cried out to God, God always listened. It is written, I heard their cries. Hallelujah. I saw their joy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is our God. Number they were killed. Ubeshi Jikalani to go into the world. Gaiba Yapad Namar engage in the world. Praise the Lord. Now, when we speak of engagement, let me let, let me get closer to something. Let me explain it a little. Engaging versus symbiosis. You know, symbiosis is symbiosis. Is now, uh, Grace or Grace gave birth to uh, beautiful Jose. Now, when Jose came out, uh, he is still attached to that uh, umbilical cord. Okay, he is connected to Grace. Praise the Lord. So, what does the doctor do? The doctor ties a, a, a something on on, on Josiah's uh, umbilical cord and gives Rajiv a scissors. You know, Rajiv is the one who has to do that. And Rajiv should go, and it is not easy. We, we think it is like cutting ribbon. No, it is not easy. I tell you, it is one of the toughest membranes in the body. I had a hard time cutting. You know, <laughs> this thing. Now, praise the Lord. That is symbiosis. With God and with each other, we are not practicing symbiosis. We are practicing to relate like adults. Praise the Lord. When I was in Qatar, um, I was driving on the beach. You know, you can drive on the beach. The problem is don't get into the water, you will be stuck. But if you don't, you avoid the water, you can drive on the beach. It, it is very nice. It is a great ride. And uh, I saw somebody watching me from far away and he was surprised. Uh, my car was an Atos. Atos is one of the smallest cars in that place. Uh, my brother called it Mercedes Benz, but the kids in our church used to call it an auto, you know, so <laughs> it was one of the smallest, but he was on a truck and he said, if this guy can drive around, I can drive around, so he, he started following me. Then he wanted to race with me, so I thought, oh, this is not good. So I just uh, go around a water body and I go back to the uh, road. This guy took a shortcut, he, he drove through a, a water body and his truck got stuck in that water. He just sat down, okay. So he's coming out of it from needy water, and I went out to help him. And uh, one Khatri came, I requested him to help him. And so he tied the rope and everything, and he told me one thing. I'll be going forward, and I will be taking a left. Tell him to take a right. Don't follow me. So I went to there and told this guy, please don't take a left. Don't go after the Arab. You should go to the right or keep straight, something like that. Avoid the Arab. He, okay. Okay, he said, okay. And the Arab said, no, you need to tell this. And the Arab called him a word in English. So I didn't translate that part, but I told him. Uh, again, again, I went to this guy and said, please, don't follow him. Go straight. So what happens? The Arab goes, pulls him out of that. Arab has a powerful truck. And he pulls this guy out of the water. And the Arab goes straight and then takes a left. And what did this guy do? He goes after the Arab. Thankfully, he brake, his brakes were not working, but just before crashing into the Arab, he somehow stopped. Okay. And the Arab stepped out of the car. I told you before, and he's talking to me, to tell this you know, guy 
not to follow. So that is symbiosis, right? We, God pulls us out of something. God wants us to be like adults. We pull somebody out of something. We want to be it as adults. If everybody here is always calling Pastor Dan and Pastor, you know, I would like to do this. What do you think? And you know, Pastor, first Pastor would be so happy. Oh, my, my sheep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But then Pastor, well, we'll have some trouble. Praise the Lord. No Pastor can uh, do like that. So, we relate as others, not on a symbiotic basis. Somewhere, you know, we relate to God, and God is relating to us not as, as father and child, but God is relating to us as others. You see, we all know that the sheep's IQ is not, but that is one of the imageries. The other imagery is bride and groom, right? Bride and groom. Bride and groom. If your bride has the IQ of a sheep, what will you do? <laughs> that marriage won't be successful. Praise the Lord. Um, so this is this is how we relate to God. We are at the same time we are sheep. At the other time, on the other hand, we are his bride. Hallelujah. He wants to engage with us. Praise the Lord. So it's not symbiosis. Just saying that knowing each other and doing each other and, and trusting and doing. So the importance of uh, uh, engaging. What happens if you don't engage with God? Why is engagement so important? John chapter one, 10 verse 1. Johanna is Vishesha Patathya, one number. Yendu kundu namala engage yudu nidhikan. Praise the Lord. Very truly I tell you, whoever does not join with me by the gate, but climbs in any by another way is a thief and a bandit. Ah, see, why is engagement important? There are thieves, there are robbers, and they don't look like robbers and thieves. They wear the skin of a sheep, they look like sheep, and they even try to imitate the bleat of a sheep, but they are not sheep, they are wolves inside. Hallelujah. If you have read Pastor uh, Thomas' book on Psalms 23, you will know that there are two types of, of, of pens, sheep pens. One pen is in the, you know, Hallelujah. When you are in cities, there are places where there will be uh, built, formally built pens, where the sheep will go in in the evening. And a lot of shepherds will be there and they will bring all their sheep and all the sheep is in the same place. Hallelujah. And they will lock it and there will be a watchman there. And in the morning the shepherd will come to that place and call out his sheep and those sheep will come out. Hallelujah. And then the other one is in the, in the wilderness or in the, in the pastures. What happened is the shepherd himself will build a small wall and he will put all his sheep inside that wall. It will be in a, in a circle. And then he will lie down there and he will spend the night sleeping. So when Jesus speaks about the door, or I am the door, that is what chapter speaks of, he speaks of his protection for his sheep, his relationship with his sheep. Hallelujah. What happens at the door? What happens at the door? A few things happen at the door. Pastor Sadhu was speaking on, uh, on this last uh, Friday. Uh, at the door, there, is, uh, there are certain phrases that is catchy. Voice happens, the shepherd's voice, the sheep follow, the sheep knows the shepherd, which is, speaks of relationship, and the shepherd gives the sheep life and never perishes, never ends. This relationship never ends. All this happens at the door, starts at the door. Jesus says, I am the door. Hallelujah. And what happens at the door? Counting happens at the door. Counting. So when the shepherd brings his sheep, the sheep is coming in and he takes the count. Just, is there all of his sheep there? He doesn't count by numbers. Know that. Shepherds count by numbers, but the real shepherds don't count by numbers. They should count by names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, Philippa Jaya, ah, Marina Sauri, mm. Sarah, mm. Sheba, mm. you know, Iconia, Sheba, Sunny. It goes on like that. Hallelujah. He counts by names, not by numbers. And uh, usually shepherds don't do call out a sheep by their name. What they go, they what they do is they go there and make a special sound. Every shepherd has their own specific 
uh, whistle or something like that. You know, uh, there is a way. When we send our uh, dog outside, uh, I will tell Olin usually, Olin, go call the dog in and uh, lock her up. And Olin will go, go out and say, Shushi, Shushi, and Shushi won't mind. So I just stand at the door and say, Whoosh! and Shushi comes running on our floor, you know. So that is my call for my dog. Usually that's what a shepherd do. Shepherds would come and come and make a, a, a noise or a voice. And his sheep know his voice and will come out. But this shepherd is different. He says, I will call you out by your name. Mm -hmm. So he goes, comes to the pen. This special shepherd stands there and says, Ah, Johnson, ah, Sobin, Anita, Tina. See? <laughs> so he calls the sheep out by their names. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our shepherd knows our name. Amen. He is the door. Huh? Why do sheep has to come in? When we go verse 9, 10 verse 9. Please read that. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. And will come in and go out and find pasture. See, they will come in and they will have rest. And then they will go out and find pasture. Jesus said, I am the path. Jesus said, I am the door. See, Jesus wants us to have rest. He's a God who engages. He's at the door. When a sheep passes through the door, that is when the shepherd looks at the sheep and examines him. Is everything all right? Is he limping? Is everything good? And the sheep also, that's a time for intimacy for the sheep. A good sheep will, you know, he's walking in or he's walking in, but by the time, you know, you just brush by the shepherd. Hallelujah. Intimacy with the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did you say that? Why did you say that? I, I, last day, somebody said, it is not possible. Something, what I wanted, she said, no, it's not possible. I wanted to slam the phone and walk away, you know. Um, but I stopped there. Why is that? Engage. Engage. Hallelujah. Engage people who attack you. Engage people who love you. Engage everybody. Engage around. Hallelujah. That is our, and engage ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our fears, our doubts, our questions, our aloneness, our loneliness. Engage. Always engage. Don't deny. Don't run away. Engage stuff. Praise the Lord. God wants to us to encourage and engage. And do you know the pro thing with engagement is there is no rest apart from God gives us. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is no path apart from Jesus. Yeshu Allah the path namaga illa. I'm not only speaking in like like Jesus is the path, but for us, His will, His wish, what He wills for us is our path. They even tirvani ke dhar namada path because He is the one who is bringing us out. He is the one who is taking us somewhere. So. We don't have any pastures, you know, meadows, green grass, still waters, apart from the our Lord. You know, last week I think it was when oh, I don't I don't know one of these last Sundays we read. Apart from you, there is no goodness for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I'll like to read from John chapter eleven and conclude my message here. John chapter 11, verse 3. Johanna and Swisha Shah Padranam Jai, Munam Dabak. So the sister sent a message to Jesus Lord, he whom you love, love is still. Oh, he's ill. And verse Ill. 4. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So, see. We hear, we hear, read about a family who is engaging Jesus in their trouble. They are trying to engage Jesus in their trouble. So first Jesus is engaging them back with their hope. 
they are engaging Jesus or trying to engage Jesus from a position of fear and anxiety. Bhayatil ninnum, bhiril ninnum aana avar Yeshu ilayke Yeshu ne engage Yeshu ne mikinna. Yeshu o, oru 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 ashwa swan kalaigal. No, he won't die, this is not for death and all that stuff. So Jesus is engaging these people, fear and anxiety with their hope. Ah, nammada bhayengalum, nammada bhiirigalum, kartav inde ashwa sattal kartav engage. Praise the Lord. So when we are afraid, when we are scared, what do we do? When we are anxious, what do we do? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, long back, long back, I had a dream and I still remember that dream, you know. In that dream, I had a problem. So I'm running to my neighbor's house. So my neighbor is a great politician and he is sitting there. Actually, it's not the neighbor, it's neighbor's uh, neighbor's brother is a politician, but the neighbor, you know, is so related to him, so he's sitting there. And beside him is this, is this saint, saintly man, he's a, he's a born again person. So I look at both of them, you know, I need help. Whom shall I get this help from? I am in trouble because I know this person will pray for me and this person, he looks like an angel actually, this, this, this born again guy, he looks like an angel. But I am, I am trying to tell this politician or the, the earthly power, what my problem is, and I wake up. And it was a warning from God. Hallelujah. Where do we go when we are scared? Where do we go when our foundations are shaking? Do we go to our God or do we go to seek some other help? Praise the Lord. So these persons tried to engage Jesus when they were scared, when they were anxious. Isa went after uh, the physicians, but these people went after Jesus. Hallelujah. Second is, they are patient. They are being patient. Hallelujah. Uh, it's verse 6. Aram Kavad. Yohanan Padanam. John 11, verse 6. Right there. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. See, looks like Jesus is disengaging. But Jesus is not disengaging. Even though Jesus is not going there, Jesus is talking about Lazarus with his disciples. You know, Yeshu is not disengaging. Jesus has disengaged. The Lord is not speaking to me anymore. Hallelujah. Even when he is not, you think that he is not speaking to you. In his heart, it is all about you. Hallelujah. He is speaking to the disciples about uh, Lazarus. Now they are speaking about Lazarus sleeping and finally, uh, verse 14. I don't know what that is. So, Jesus is now talking to the disciples and verse 16, Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's also go that we may die with him. See, here we see Jesus is involving, engaging with his disciples and they don't want to go. The disciples don't want to go. Sometimes God takes us to a place where we don't want to be. Here Thomas is engaging. That is the first time Thomas is speaking out. Thomas is emerging as a, a, a great leader or a disciple from that part. His first statement is not so commendable though. He said, Let us all go and die with you. Yeah? That is how he is emerging into the stage. Praise the Lord. So, when we read that, their trepidation is met with Jesus' faith. Jesus is engaging their trepidation, their fear again, their doubts again, with faith. Hallelujah. Now, when we come down, come down, when we come down, I'm not going to read any verses. We see Martha and Mary engaging with Jesus. When we, when we read about the engagement or engaging between Jesus and Martha, 
we see, we read a great theological discourse going on there. See, Martha comes and says, If you were here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life and truth. And she said, yeah, I know he will be resurrected in the end. And Martha, Jesus has to call her. And Jesus is engaging with Martha and talking to her. If you believe, you know, nobody will die. They will all have eternal life. They will be living in me. And do you believe this? And Martha says, I believe. And she walks away. Actually, she says, I believe. And she exits the scene. As for Mary, she doesn't engage Jesus. Or maybe it is a way of, you know, this, this feigning disengagement. Mary does not even come to greet Jesus. Martha goes to Mary and pulls Mary to Jesus. Oh, Master is seeking for you. So Mary comes. She falls down at Jesus' feet. Says the same sentence, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And then she starts crying. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw Mary crying, and the Jews who came with her crying, his heart was shaken. He was overwhelmed, and he shed tears. Hallelujah. Now this is the principle of engagement. We can, you know, always show something strong or we can go relate to God as we are. When the Pharisee and the tax collector goes to pray, the Pharisee is not lying. Mind my words, mark my words, the Pharisee is not lying. The Pharisee is praying inside his heart. I, I do this. I do that. I'm not like this guy here. No, I, 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 I'm good. I'm perfect. The other guy is engaging God in a different way. Forgive me a sinner. Mm -hmm. No, he's beating his chest and he's saying, forgive me a sinner. And he goes home. Not to the marketplace. He goes home. Hallelujah. There is a metanoia in his heart. <clears throat> There's a change of heart. When God comes and looks and tries to engage us, are we ready to engage him? Genuinely. Yes. As we are. Sometimes, you know, we think, oh, God won't be pleased by that prayer. <coughs> God wants verses. God won't be uh, happy with my, 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 my unfit unbelief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes we ask, we, we are in a point where, Lord, I know you have something in your heart. See, Moses is crying inside his heart, but nobody sees it. Mm -hmm. But he is crying out to God. He's not crying before the people. He's crying out to God. And nobody is seeing. God is asking, why are you crying out to me? Stretch your staff and I will divide the Red Sea for you. Praise Him. Engaging God. Engaging God. In Hosea chapter 7, verse 14. Why chapter? My love. Oh, they are not crying out to me, but they are crying on their bed. They are wailing on their bed. God wants us to engage Him when we are stuck. God wants us to engage Him when we are happy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See our Rajiv and Grace and the whole family, they are engaging God because they are so happy. Praise God. And Shibu and Blessy, when they went through their trouble, they are engaging God in their trouble. And we are all engaging God for them. We are all engaging each other. Don't avoid it. Don't deny it. Don't disengage. Engage. Pastor and the Come and engage. Come and engage. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is freedom to engage. If you don't engage, you know what happens? Slowly, disengagement creeps in. Yes. People get disconnected. 
and then comes uh, over the wall somebody in sheepskin. And you bleed like <laughs> but <clears throat> now, a wolf trying to bleed like sheep. And the end we won't have. So it is very serious. Hallelujah. God is a God of engagement. He wants to engage each one of us. He wants us to engage each other. Hallelujah. Don't run away from engaging. Sometimes it is very hard. But Jesus engaged everybody. He engaged the thief on the cross. He engaged his mother and his beloved disciple who was standing there and cried. He engaged his father from the cross. Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbatan. Hallelujah. He engaged the people who hurt him. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Is there is out of his heart is flowing out rivers of forgiveness, yes. which is going on to these people who are insulting him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God of engagement. Thank you, Lord, for these moments. Yes. We know in our heart that you want to engage us. Even when times when we feel like you are not engaged or you are disengaged, it is not so. We know from the word. You always is a